And I wonder if you could just tell me a little bit about the, the theme of a Chinese home. Well, you know, things start one way and they continue other ways sometimes. Um, when we first started gathering ideas about three years ago for a Chinese home, um, the, the, uh, the ideas were so extremely vast. And uh, I wanted everyone in Kronos to learn Mandarin. I wanted us all to play <laughs> all kinds of uh, air hoos and various, uh, learn all sorts of new things. And, and, um, and actually, all of the things that I originally wanted to do are in a Chinese home. It's just because life is short and time is fleeting, um, things are reduced. So our Mandarin is a few words. Uh, some of the instruments that we play, uh, uh, new instruments that we've learned to play, are absolutely fascinating. And, uh, um, and with the help of Xi Jing Chen, uh, uh, he really helped Wu Man and I uh, bring the ideas together into co a coherent form. And um, he's not only a, a fantastic visual designer, um, but he's a wonderful musician. He kind of understands musicians. And uh, so it was really natural to work with him. And it's the very first time I've ever worked uh, with a director, and the first time Kronos has. Hmm. And uh, I think together we've. Um, in the end, what I wanted to do was explore what it was like to grow up in during the Cultural Revolution in China. And um, for those people that have seen a Chinese home and grew up in Mao's China and the Cultural Revolution, um, I've been told there's nothing that they've ever seen that's quite as true to what it really was like. Mm. And um, so with a lot of help from Wuhan and Xi Jing Chen and a lot of listening to the vast world of the music of China and all the sounds, of, um, just uh, we put together an immense library of, of sounds actually that we collected. And um, I'm very happy with this piece. I, I, for me, it, it, it takes Kronos to um, in, in the scope of our work, I, I think it really sets a new high point for us. I'm, I'm so happy that we're going to be playing this. In, uh, now, now, it's a piece with multiple composers, correct? Uh, well, or? there really isn't a composer. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I think you could say that I curated it along with Wu Man and Xi Jing Chen. I think, I think that would be the best way to, okay. to turn this. Um, and we used um, as much of the world of Chinese culture and music as we could possibly put together to give a sense of, of just the kind of the hugeness of, of what Chinese history and uh, music and sound is. And, and there are so many layers. And for me, one of the things I value the most in, in what we've done is, is the, the idea that, that nothing really disappears. And so anything you hear near the beginning of the piece comes back. Everything keeps coming back in various ways. And it might be refracted or, or uh, kind of broken up in, in new ways. Um, and for those of you that come to uh, the show, uh, be sure and check out the, the music, kind of the sonic design mm -hmm. between Ghost Opera and a Chinese home. There's about a half an hour of... Uh, During the intermission? Or, uh, yeah, 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 there's, there's, there's um, basically a, a lot of thought went into kind of setting the stage for a Chinese home. And, and a lot of things that didn't make it into the... Uh, Chinese home made it into the 30-minute ah. sound design, and so there's all kinds of 
radio shows from Tibet, uh, for example. There's there's the very first recording ever made of Chinese music from 1895. Hmm. I, I, On old wax cylinders. Wax cylinder. I, I, yeah. uh, there's a, a collector that found that for me, and and we had it transferred. And uh, hmm. I wanted to figure out a way to get it into the actual piece, and I couldn't figure out a way. But it's in the. It, you'll hear it. It's in the. Uh, Prelude music. Speaking of technology, I, I learned in the New York Times review of your Carnegie Hall performance that uh, that Wu Man employs some wah wah pedals and, and other effects. Well, what, what was that? Was that is that a new thing for her? Or uh... yes, it is a new thing. Mm -hmm. uh, she's never uh, done anything quite like that in concert. And um, I mean, one of the things that I wanted to do was uh, to bring the pipa which is, is China's most classical instrument, really to bring that instrument into the 21st century. And we did that by uh, asking Walter Katundu, who's a, a wonderful instrument builder and this marvelous uh, creative force who lives in San Francisco. Uh, we asked him to, to build a new pipa so that there's a, an actual uh, a totally new instrument that is is uh, can make live samples. And, you know, it, it's a solid body pipa, is what it is. So that, does it use pickups like a guitar? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's fully electrified instrument, and and so she's able to activate all kinds of. Uh, I mean, she can sound like Kronos, she can sound like Mao Zedong, she can sound like uh, all kinds of <laughs> things all at the same time, actually. Wow. And. Uh, uh, so there's there, there's a lot of layers that have gone into this piece, and it, it started out. The very first inspiration was um, a visit that I had to Yin Yutong, which is the, um, the home that was brought board by board and nail by nail from Anhui Province in China, and it's it's uh, about 250, close to 300 years old, actually. And when you walk into this reconstructed, it's Chinese at the home, Peabody Essex Museum. It's at the Peabody right. Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And you walk in there, and well, when I walked in there, the first thing that happened to me was I wanted I, I, my imagination just kind of um, exploded, really, because I I I was just so curious what had these walls heard for all these hundreds of years. The life, the festivals, the deaths, the births, the, uh, I mean, the, all forms of music and human sounds. And, and I found myself so interested in, I mean, I, I think it was the fact that this, this beautiful home in Newton had been so wonderfully, carefully preserved. And then later we went to the village in Anhui province and saw the actual place where the home, the Yin Yutong was. And What's there now? Um, well, it's actually kind of a vacant lot right now, but right <laughs> next to it is, uh, you know, there are other homes uh, similar to it. And uh, uh, in China, during the Cultural Revolution, most architecture like that was destroyed. And so this is it's very rare. And it's fantastically Hmm. Just, yeah. so quite, quite literally a home away from home now yes. in memory. Yeah.